Okay, hey guys, so yesterday I covered, you know, the essentials, um, prepping your models for creation, uh, the kit you need, you know, that stuff. Today I'm going to be doing a little more of the gluing, I'm going to finish off the skeletal men aspect of the models, and I'm going to show you how to undercoat also. So, here we go. Okay, so what I've got here is all the parts to create the men. I've put them into different sections. Um, I've got bows here, the bodies, the heads. It just makes it easier to find what you're after. And basically it's the same process as the horses. Um, make sure when you're doing them, you know, there's no bits that need sanding down or clipping. Cause yeah, otherwise they just won't fit properly and then you're going to be pissed off. So, I think how I'm going to begin mine is putting the heads onto the bodies. So, here we go with that one. Now again, I'm just checking the head lock for any plastic that isn't meant to be there. And then I select my heads. I think I'm going to go with the ones with the helmets, they look cool. With packs like this, you always end up with more packs than you need. And, <coughs> sorry, yeah, you end up with more packs than you need. And I'll show you a great way of using the spare packs near the end. They're coming handy. So, how many have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to have to give two people normal heads by the looks of things. But yeah, most of them can have helmets, which is pretty cool. Okay, so blue. I'll start with this dude, you think? Okay, so his headpiece is fine. So if I little glue into the notch. There we go. And this can be a little fiddly. And then that goes on there. Cool. Okay. So that's all eight of the heads on. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six spare, so I'll show you something I can do with those after. Um, I think next I'm going to do the arms. Okay, this dude should be right. So what I'm going to do is sign down his arm pads first, because there's a bit of stuff on them. There we go. That one's done. And so is that one. Great. Now. We could give them all sorts here, guys. Um, okay. Okay, I've made a decision. Glue the and I am gonna give him a sword. So that's his arm. Hey guys, I thought I'd um, put this back on. I've just done a modification. Um, it would have taken too long. You wouldn't have seen much of it anyway because the camera is not that great at uh, small stuff. But what I've done is given this guy two swords. So he's got the one standing, ha one hand um, swinging up, and he's the other down. I'm going to see if I can manually focus that for you. Give me a second. No, my focus isn't working. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I manually focus it. Okay, that's better. So yeah, he's got the one standing up and he's got another down. I just think that looks pretty badass. Let me know what you think. But yeah, he be dual wielding. <laughs> so I think I'm going to put him up front. I think he might be, you know, one of the commanders. I don't know yet. But I thought, yeah, that was pretty badass. So I'm going to put this back on. 
once I've got something relevant to show you. I'm going to carry on putting these together. Um, what I'll be doing now, now all the main parts are gone, I'll be putting spears on and bows. And yeah, it's the same process. You put glue in the joint and it goes on the arm. It's nothing major. Once that's done, I'll um, be putting the shields on and I'll switch you back on for that. And then after that, it's putting them on the horses, and then it's uh, yeah, and then it's time to paint. So be back soon, guys. Hey guys, so I finished putting all the um, spears, bows on, etc. So I'm going to start on the shields. Now I'm going to begin with this guy, the one with the horn. And I picked out the shield I want for him. I want to stand on the sides because there's a bits of debris left over from the um, framing, everything. So that's gone. And now I need to pick a hand. Um, well, I think I'm going to pick one of these ones. It has a closed fist. It's a bit of work with the clippers. There we go. Now I'm going to glue the hand into the shield first before I put it onto the person. I think it just be easier that way. So what I want to do is put glue in between the two brackets on the shield. So, and a little around here, 3D spot that hand in. So when that goes, well, again a little tricky, but you'll manage it. Okay, so that thing, I'm going to put that to the side next to him so I know who it's for. And I'll do the next one. I've decided people with bows, I'm not going to get shields because, well, how would they fire it? And yes, I am very, you know, anal about that type of stuff, even though it's completely fantasy and I'm not even going to play with these, I'm just painting them. I still want to get detail correct in a sense. So he's got the bold men are gonna have shields, they're gonna have open fists. So they can go there for now. The spearmen will have shields, so those two will. That dude clearly won't because well he's got two swords. <laughs> and then the banner guy, I haven't decided, I don't know if I should get an open hand to clasp around the banner or a shield yet. So I'm deciding on that now. Um, what I'm going to do next is the shields for the spearmen. So I've selected a few shields here which I thought were cool. I'll pick one up, give it a trim. And then I repeat the process. So I find a hand that I think would go well. And then I put the glue in. Okay, that one's done. So I'll put that there, and that can be for that guy. Okay, guys, so I think you get the idea with the shields. I'll um, put the video back on once I'm putting the actual hands onto the body. So you get to see that. But until then, I'm going to pause this. To this one, and yeah, there you go. So there's damn this focus. I need a better camera. Where's my focus wheel? So there's the shield, and there's the hand inside it. So I let them dry. Okay guys, so I'm going to pause this now, and I'll be back to you soon. Welcome back guys, um, so I think it's time to put the shields on. Just a quick thing, my banner dude, I decided to give him a shield, and I've selected the banner, there was two in the pack, so I'm going to be using this one, which I thought was pretty cool. And the other one I've broken down, I've taken off um, 
the two cloth parts and I've trimmed down the main banner. I've got something cool in mind for though, we shall see that in a bit. Um, once I've got the arms on, basically it's just arrows left and maybe some custom stuff. Nothing too major. And yeah, then we're good to go for painting. So, okay, let's begin putting the shields on. So I'll start with the horn guy again. So I put some glue onto where the shield or the arm would go. And it just slips on there. Nothing nothing too major. If you wanted to, I got it leans against his leg. You could also put some glue on the leg for some extra support. And there we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to zoom this out a little, I think you're having trouble seeing, there we go. So that's one guy complete. So I'm going to lie him down. Let the glue dry a bit. We'll do this guy next. Now, I haven't given any thought for the layout of the shield, so I think I'll be a bit eccentric on some. Like this guy, I think he's going to be waving it up in the air. That's a big old fuck you. <laughs> there we go. By the way guys, if you think I'm sounding a bit groggy, it's because I have a cold and... I don't think this plastic glue's helping much. But, you know, it's all good. It's all good. I'll I'll be fine. I'm having a good time. <laughs> Stay there. Okay. That's two then, so two to go. Now normally when you buy these packs from Games Workshop, um, the cavalry on these stands slot together like so. I don't know if you can see that on camera. And then obviously the men go on top and it looks, you know, just nice and clean on the battlefield. But since I'm not playing with these, I can put the spears like this and I don't have to worry about them, you know, hitting other pieces. So that's something to bear in mind if you do want to play the game. Um, make sure, you know, anything you do design ain't going to clash with anything else. Also, there's a lot of rules in the Warhammer game where certain things wouldn't be allowed, like my guy with the two swords, I probably wouldn't be allowed but again, I'm just doing this as a showcase a painting thing so it's o it's okay <laughs> yeah, just bear that in mind, if you ever want to play the game if you make, you know, custom models like these you might not be able to use them but they do look good so, you know, it's up to you whatever you decide, I'm sure it'll be pretty cool and if you decide, you know, to make some, be it Warhammer, Airfix, and there's a few others out there that I'm not too sure on, you know, make a video response, show me your work, I'd, I'd love to see it. If you think you can give me some pointers again, I'd love to hear them, because this is, you know, something I just picked up again recently, and it's been like five years since I've done this. So if you think, you know, oh, this dude sucks, why are we watching him? Please, you know, give me some pointers, I'm always here to learn. So those are all the shields done. I've still got the banner to put on, which I will do shortly. I think I'm going to let the glue dry for now, and then I'm going to start on the arrow quivers. Now these normally go over the head, so I'll do that, but I think I've got an idea for some with the horses as well. So I'm going to test that out before I show it. So I'm going to pause it now, let the glue dry, and I'll be back with you. Okay guys, so I'm ready to put the arrow, well the quivers and the arrows onto the bowmen. Um, this will be a little uh, fiddly, as you will come to see why. So the first thing I've got to do is pick which quivers I want. I want that one. I think that looks cool, so I'm going to give that a try. That. 
Okay, that one's good to go. That one's pretty cool. Okay, we'll have those three. I'll find use with the other ones. After I've done all the um, main building of the models, I normally do some fine detail building, as you shall see. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we shall see what happens. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, this guy, I guess. I have to do this. I'm going to have to thread it through his arm first. I don't know if you can see this up and around. It's very, very awkward. So now I get to see where it's actually, you know, sticking to him and I get to put the glue on. Don't put the glue on before you um, put the arrow on, otherwise the glue will go everywhere and you'll end up with a mess. Okay, so that's the first arrow dude ready. Once that glue is dry, he can, you know, be put on the horse. Oh, I also decided that the jewel wielding guy will also be having the horse that I created without the base plate mount. I chopped them off and gave it like a bucking look. So when he's on the like that, I think it looks pretty damn cool. So that's going to be his horse. So, yeah, once I'm onto that, then I'll show you. <laughs> okay, guys, so I think we're ready to mount the people onto the horses now. So, I'm going to begin with the jewel sword guy, because I think he's my favourite. So, I've got his horse here. Now, what I'm going to do is work out where I want him on the horse first. So probably when I'm centered around there. That'd be cool. So have a quick look. Now I got a reference point for the glue. So on goes the glue. And this will probably take a while. Because there's no actual slot for the people to go into. So it is, you know, basically hold and wait. But it shouldn't take too long. I'm hoping it'll look very badass once it's done. Okay. There's our first model ready for painting, I believe. So I'll put him there. I recommend after you finish a model like that, let it dry for probably two, three hours. So it's four o'clock here at the moment. I'm gonna pick this up at about seven to start painting. I'll get some extra light in so you can see. Um, and I'll, I'll also show you the additions I'm going to make once all the men are on. And hopefully you'll like them. If not, well, I'm sorry, I guess. Oh, uh, in the last break as well, I also put the banner on that dude. So, he's good to go now. They're all good to go. Okay, so I'm going to pause it and finish off the horses. And then I'll be back to you with the additions. Okay guys, so as you can see here, uh, all the men are now on the horses. I'm going to let them dry for a few minutes, and then we're going to start with the custom work with all the parts left over. Okay guys, so I'm starting the custom work now. What I've done first is taken some of the leftover quivers, and I've chopped off the handle that you know goes under the arm. So I've just got that, and what I was thinking of doing is putting them onto the skeletal horses of the archers. 
to make it look like um, the archers have reserve arrows. So, and we'll do that now with this one first. It shouldn't be too high, you just you know, glue the area where you want the piece to go. And there we go, that dude now has a spare quiver. So there's one done. Got to do it for the other two as well. Now, for the dual wielding guy, I was thinking something very cool. That spare banner bit. I'm thinking of putting it on the neck of the horse. Check that out. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, hey guys, so I finished with all the custom stuff now. As you can see, I have put stuff on the bases as well, some skulls, broken armor, etc. Just to give it a bit more realism. Um, You'll see the custom stuff up close when I start the painting. So I'm going to let these dry for a couple of hours and then we're going to get onto undercoating. Hey guys, so it is time to undercoat. Now you'll need a few things for this. First of all, I recommend you cover the desk you're using because the paint will stain it, it won't come off. This is what I just got some paper. Um, you can use newspaper, wherever you want, it won't go through that, it'll be fine. You'll want some tissue paper for wiping the brushes. Um, water to wash them. The paint, obviously. Um, normally when you undercoat, you use either black or white, and it's a matte paint. Make sure it's matte. Um, what undercoating means, it's a layer of paint you put over the entire model before you start painting it for real. It gives um, a better surface to work with and you'll add depth to the paint as well and give a better realism. Um, obviously you also need a paintbrush. Now what I've got here is a brush specialised for undercoating. It's a medium sized bristle so it will work very well. Um, apart from that you're good to go. You don't want to put the paint on too thick, you want it thin, otherwise you'll lose detail in the model. So yeah, I've got nothing else to say apart from let's give this a go. So here we go. Okay guys, so it doesn't matter where you set, you can pick any of the models, so I'm going to pick this one since it's in the front. It's the guy with the two swords and all the stuff on the bottom, it looks very cool. And. Something I forgot to mention, when using the paint, shake it. You don't want to just open it up. And you can also get the undercoat as a spray, like a spray paint. That stuff's good, it'll make sure it's not so thick on the model, but it will miss a lot of um it'll miss a lot of the parts of the model and you always end up using more paint than what's necessary. And this lid will not stay open. Okay. So go dip the paintbrush into the water and give it a wipe. So it's quite a little damp, nothing major. You put it in the paint and here we go, we start the undercoat. Now you can do this any way you want, I normally work from top to bottom. But it's completely your choice on how you do this. Also, since it is an undercoat, you don't have to be meticulous with it. Um, if there's little specks of grey plastic left after the undercoat, don't worry about it that much. You don't need to get the whole thing, just the main parts. And as you can see, one little brush will, will do a lot of the model. So you don't need to go crazy with the paint. A useful tip is to get a bright light, like I've got here, that way any white bits will stick out and you can correct it. Another thing guys, never paint your models before you glue them together. The um, plastic glue contains a chemical that 
basically eats away at the paint. So as soon as you put that paint onto the model and then the glue, the glue will just destroy your work and you'll end up having to do it all over again. So yeah, avoid that. Okay guys, so I finished the first model's undercoat. So he's ready to be painted now. Completely black. I've also black uh, undercoated the stuff on the base. It'll be painted properly. I might start tomorrow actually. Okay. So there you go guys. Nothing major. If you need any help, send me a message. Thank you for watching. And I hope you've enjoyed. Take care.